In the house, police find three military-issue bulletproof vests. They also recover the distinctive hat Sykes may have worn during the fight with Douglas Mullings. That's the tray out this. It's all gone well. We'll see what happens back at Edmonton. It's unbelievable how this job has gone. In about a week and a half, everyone's been arrested. Yeah, which is good, yeah? Very good. Very mm. unusual, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Yeah, right. Face the front, please. In a video ID parade, Sykes is positively identified by both Jennifer Mullings and her daughter Natalie. Turn your shoulders so you're facing towards the wall looking at that, please. Sykes refuses to answer any questions, but instead chooses to make a written statement. Right, we did the third interview. Started off by just saying he didn't make a phone call to David Gaynor to get him to shoot anyone. I think the witnesses are wrong. There's a whole argument started over me and the accident in the car. Also, I didn't say, come round, bring your stuff. Culturally, I don't speak like that. I generally speak slang. Merrick Hamilton made the call to David Gaynor. He also said, good, I'm glad that was done. So, interestingly enough, he's off in it all on Merrick. That's it. So, give me a call back on my mobile with a CPS decision. You know, I went for a CPS decision as to uh, what to do with you. The decision has come back to charge you with attempted murder. The right, custody skipper is going to charge you now. OK, there's one charge against you, which is on the 30th of May 2004, at Meridian Walk N17. You attempted to murder Douglas Mullins. This is contrary to Section 1 of the Criminal Attempts Act 1981. In answer to the charge, you do not have to say anything. You may harm your defence if you do not mention something you later lie in court. Anything you do say will be given in evidence. That's 13.45, no reply. So, I mean, sign here to say that you made no reply. Sign anything wrong. Have we done fingerprints? DNA no, we're going to do it. I have to say. Just decline to sign, can you? Three, three or six, seven. Sykes has his solicitor okay. present. So been to go with his officers, you're going to get your... The evidence is quite strong against Sykes. He's been picked out twice. It's a very clear-cut case from our perspective that uh, he's a man that's made the phone call to, uh, to the gunman, to Gaynor, to come down um, to shoot Mullins. It was Hamilton's phone that uh, appears to have been used. Both Shapush and Hamilton were, were together. They were both very excited, very aggressive. They were uh, cutting their air through hand movements and, and gun fingers were going on as if they were threatening, you know, your old man's going to get it, as if intimating that he was going to get shot. It's quite clear that Hamilton's got a part in this and uh, we'll wait and see how much of a part he had. Right, I'll take it, you've got a uniform, uniform car playing eyeball on it, have you? Two weeks later, DS Richard Davis is on the trail of two suspects who've been in hiding since the shooting. They were in the stolen Mercedes as it drove away from Meridian Walk. The Trident team fears they may have the shotgun used against Douglas. Well, I've got reason to believe, right, that you're concerned yeah, in the shooting of Douglas Mullins on the 30th of May. OK? Yeah, uh, this off, sir. Also, that you were driving a Mercedes, which is stolen. Yeah, that, OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nick you now. I'll tell you. All right, and then we're going to go back to speak to the police station. So I'm going to formally arrest you, all right, for a conspiracy to murder, violent disorder, and uh, theft of a Mercedes motor vehicle. The vehicle that you're in, yeah, we're going to search that. That's not going to do it, bro. That, 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 no, that is my car. I might stand in, I might stand in the firearm from the, from the shooting, okay? Okay, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search your car. Okay. I'm going to search your address. All right, so uh, at the moment... Can I just ask no, one question? No phone calls, I'm going to detain both of the people. Okay, can I just ask one question? Yeah, sorry, what, what's, this got to do what, what's, what's your name? The young woman was with the suspects when stopped. They admit they've been to her house, which is nearby. Probably got nothing to do with you whatsoever. Unfortunately, because you're with them, because they've been to your house today, I'm going to search it. I haven't been to the old premises. You just said you had two seconds ago. No, I said I was outside the old premises. I haven't been inside you. Ask your mum if I have set foot in the old premises. I have not. I've not set foot in the old premises. Right. She's now said that she was in the Mercedes, which turned out which had the accident initially on the day, which sparked up a whole thing. And we're not going to arrest her at this stage, um, as we can't. As we don't think her involvement goes beyond being the girlfriend of uh, one of the boy people there, really. So, so now we're just going to take her up to the address and we're going to start searching as all is organised. Um, and that's it, and hopefully we might find a firearm. Police can find no weapons in the car, but DS Richard Davis wants to search the girls' home because the arrested men have been there. 
The girl's mother and sister are outside. Are you happy with her connections with these people? Or no. You're not at all? Didn't know, I knew he was a bit blooming slippery, but I didn't know, like, how bad. I think she's scared of him. The way she's acted with me, yeah, it was like she awful. was being pressurised. I went through her drawers and found little wraps of something, mm -hmm. whatever that was. I don't know what it was. Um, so, like, it could only have been him. We'll do. We're going to search your house. Yeah. Um, you can come in with us. Obviously, we'll just leave one if that's feasible because we don't get too many people up in there when we start searching. And, and, and your house. Like, so I'm, a bed where it's against the wall. They pull it out. She's made a hole, so the hole underneath of the bed is just space. Is that where she keeps the stuff? Is it? You tell me. This is the bedroom, and um, in here, under the bed, they found that. Appears to be a, a silver handgun, silver revolver with black taped handle. And so she's been arrested on suspicion of uh, possession of a firearm. The dog has shown a lot of interest in this room, but in, in particular, of course, it's uh, sniffed around a lot not next door. And it's shown a lot of attention to that bottom corner there and the floorboard underneath it. But the dog's had a good sniff and it, it quite likes a lot of it around here. So uh, I don't know if firearms have been here regularly or it's just on the odd occasion. So I don't know whose room this is at present, but certainly we're going to call in our specialist search team and they can do the whole bit to make sure we don't miss anything. The search team does not find any other firearms. The gun found under the mattress is an imitation. The two arrested men are released without charge, but the team makes an unexpected find. What looks to be 16 kilos of cocaine. The girl, her mother, and a lodger are all arrested for possession of the cocaine. <laughs> Can I quickly see him? Because I swear to God, this is out of order. He's been such a prick keeping me and my mum in here for no reason. It's out of order. Weirdo, I hate that little shrimp. You had him in your possession a large quantity of cocaine. The amount of drugs that are recovered are in the region of £500,000. The defendant is quite clearly fi financing his lifestyle through the supply of controlled drugs. From the circumstances of what the officer has told me, okay, I'm not going to bear this matter. Understand? Yeah. If you'd like to go with this officer now, and he will take your photographs, okay? Yeah. Probably. Probably. My client in the interview has given her full account to the officers. As she knows nothing about the drugs. The drugs were not found in her room. <laughs> yes, she lives within the household. I don't even go in the room that the drugs are found in. <laughs> there is nothing to suggest that you've granted bail in relation to these matters. She will fail to surrender. I've been bailed before and I turn up. It's not like I'm not going to turn up. She's only 18 years of age, of previous good character. <laughs> I've listened to what the officer has to say and I've listened to what the, the, your solicitor has got to say and my decision is that I'm not going to grant you bail. Just you can do anything. If, if you have to put a tag on me, anything. You may not turn up at court tomorrow. I will turn up. Because of the serious nature of the I will the, turn up. You can do anything. I promise on my niece and nephew's life I will turn up. All right. <laughs> I can't like, stay in there, you know. I guarantee you that I'll turn up at court. Well, I'm going to ensure that you, you do. All right, and that means you'll stay here tonight. Okay. Police drop the charges against the girl and her mother when Philip Hadley accepts responsibility for the drugs. He's sentenced to eight and a half years in prison. The girl admits to being in the gold Mercedes when it dented Douglas Mullins's car, but she was not involved in the fight or the shooting. Phone records show that shortly before the shooting, three calls were made from Merrick Hamilton's phone to the alleged gunman. Witnesses say that Sykes actually made the calls, but it's enough evidence to charge Hamilton as well. The trial for the attempted murder of Douglas Mullings will involve Hamilton and three other accused. David Gaynor, believed to be the assassin. Simeon Shapush, known as Sykes, who allegedly ordered the assassination attempt and the suspected driver of the car that Gaynor travelled in. Four charged, a nice little trial looming. At the moment, all we had on Gaynor was identification evidence about him being picked out as a gunman. 
A search was done on Gaynor's home address and a load of photos were recovered. There's some nice little shots here. There's two uh, A4 shots of David Gaynor shoving a, uh, what appears to be a... a